you feel the need to have a marquee player to start your franchise at the beginning, having at least one big name? Not necessarily. Um, the face of our franchise will be uh, our logo. Um, that's the way we're going to try and do things and be team centric and um, we'll get as many good players as we can but as we all know uh, it's about building the right team the right chemistry and all those cliches but but that's real and uh, so I, we don't feel the need to, to go get names and in fact I had a great conversation with Doug Reisbrow about expansion he said it's the unknown surprises that uh, sometimes do more for your organization. You're taking young guys that people haven't heard of that two years later, they're really good players. What about one guy a lot of people have heard of in Ilya Kovalchuk? Where are you at on, on, on that situation? Um, we're, we're nowhere. We haven't had any discussions, and I don't imagine we'd go down that path. George, you had down what Michael? path in, in the sense to of? To talk to a, a player like Kovalchuk. You know, we'll be looking for younger players and people that will be with us three or four years from now. And, you had Michael on the river when you were with Washington until the beginning of his career. What's your evaluation of him now uh, as you see him? It's a few years later. Mm -hmm. um, well, he's, uh, we've always uh, described Michael as a, as a guy who was, as a goaltender, almost technically perfect. He had uh, you know, a, a, certainly uh, a great physique and body composition for the position. He's athletic. But technically, he played the game really well. And it was just about um, him growing up and maturing. Uh, and we thought that uh, when that happened, he'd be an outstanding goaltender. And he's at that point now. He, he can be really good. Is he a guy on your radar if, if in fact, he's not prepared? Well, we'll see. You know, I'm certainly not going to talk about who we're, we might be interested here, uh, in here. Um, and I've said this a thousand times, until we see the whole universe of who's available, we might like a particular player, but there's another player on that roster that we like too. And that's a better fit. Since there's and a everything's related to everything else. So uh, doing one thing with one club may change how we approach another club. Since there's a free agency window open for you, which seems unique, how do you, once, once those players are released, I mean, do, do you have a target number of how many players you might think about signing instead of, you know, selecting? Well, again, it, until we see everything, it's hard to know. But if that's the best asset with that particular team, then we're going to be aggressive and negotiate with that player. It was really helpful that the league gave us another day to work on that sort of thing because most expansion teams in the past have had three to five days. And we only had two, and it was going to be difficult to do everything in two days. So getting another 24 hours to work on things is, is really helpful. Um, but until we see everything, it's hard to know just exactly how many free agents uh, will try to sign or sign. As you mentioned, you wanted younger guys and will want younger guys. What type of veteran would you want for your organization? Well, again, it's, yeah. it's about putting the whole thing together and, and trying to make it all fit. You know, we're going to need a little bit of everything. You know? Of course, you'd like some young players and some young assets, but we're going to need veteran players. Uh, we would want to have a really competitive team, and we want veteran players who compete and provide some leadership. There's been talk that one strategy some might consider Vegas taking is maybe stockpiling goalies um, or, say, defensemen. I mean, because that provides trade bait. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the question is, but I mean, how, how have you looked at the options of what you can do beyond, you know, as far as trading? beyond the expansion draft? Uh, well, again, we're going to take a look at everything. And, uh, you know, we've planned as, as, as much as um, a, a club can plan for this. Uh, we know the players really well. But again, if you're telling me we're going to stockpile goaltenders, we could go to a team and like the goalie, but we like a defenseman better. And um, that's why we needed uh, three days to do this, uh, 72 hours, uh, because we're going to get a look at it and we're going to go through it and it's going to be different from our mock drafts because this one's real and uh, we'll sort of put it together but then we're going to have to 
to go over it and over and over it to try and get it right. It's not going to be an easy process. George, based on what you learned this week, do you have any idea of whether there'll be major changes to your board or maybe it's week for two? From, from this for the entry With, draft? Uh, the, the entry draft? Yeah. Um, some players will move up a little bit, some players will move down. That's that's what that's this week is about. Up. I don't think so. No, we've uh, we've been scouting all year long and having our meetings all year long. Uh, and um, But you, you've got to use all the information you, you can get, and that's why we come here and interview these kids and then take a look at them and, and uh, sort of apply the data that we, we learned from the testing here to help us make decisions. But, um, you know, that's going to be our most important draft. You know, if we've got to get better players out of the entry draft than the expansion draft if, if we want to be a good team and compete for a cup one day. We're going to have to be really good at the entry draft.